Tony Da Silva. Today I am at the Xavier Center of Historical Research and this is the office of the director and in front of me is the director and my friend Father Tony Da SJ, Dr. Tony Da SJ, sitting with his proud new product. Tony, tell us about it. Well, we are very happy to have completed this research project on the Jesuits, Goa and the Arts. Hmm. It is edited by Father Reinald and myself and the photography is by David D'Souza. I think, I think without, without exaggeration, the photography is probably the unique part about it, no? Because uh, David is such a, such a talented photographer. Yes. No. I, I'm not trying to, to minimize the importance of the writing, but... The, it's very true. The pictures are excellent and they have been shot with great professionalism. And that is why the book also, the value of the book goes up tremendously. Mm. Of course, David, David is this uh, former pro professor of chemistry who has taken That's the photography. Right. David is from St. Xavier's College, Bombay. And so he was associated with the Jesuits for many years. So he understood very well the purpose of this mission, hmm. that the Jesuit art in Goa has not only to be preserved, but has also to be shared with others so that they could appreciate this art that is now more than approximately 400 years old in Goa. So it was his idea or your idea or how did it come? No, the idea came from me here okay. from the Xavier Center in our discussions because we wanted to celebrate the 400th okay. uh, anniversary of the canonization of these two great men, St. Ignatius of Loyola and Francis Xavier. Hmm. So since Francis Xavier had come to Goa, the focus of the book is very much on the art and architecture related to the basilica and other Jesuit architecture okay. in Goa, okay. especially the churches of South, South okay. Goa. Okay. So, so, so uh, it, it took a lot of time and a lot of work obviously to make this happen. Yes, indeed. We had thought we could do this, complete the project within a year, but, uh, but it was not so. Although I must say that David completed his part, okay. the photography part, okay. rather rapidly and very well. But we got delayed in writing the article. There are six articles in the book. Yeah. What uh, do they focus on? Uh, they focus on the art. Okay. So they explain some of the church art. They explain also how the local people, the Goan people got involved in the art. So it is not only European missionary art, but it is that combined with what the local artisans contributed. Mm. Some were Hindus, some were newly converted to Christianity, and so on and so forth. So in that sense, historically, it's very rich. Mm. And uh, Just to get into some details about uh, the table of contents. Right. I'll just show you the table of contents. Yeah. No, no, fine. I'll come that side. So... So for example, uh, this article by a, a scholar who is a Portuguese uh, scholar, hmm. I mean from Portugal, but she teaches now in Macau okay. and she has worked in Goa, Christina Oswald, also known to you, Frederick, yeah, yeah. and she has written this article on the Jesuit modo goano, meaning to say the Goan mode of art, how the Goan artisans were incorporated. Which was different from, from the global Jesuit mode? Yes, not uh, different but certainly in addition because a lot of Hindu and, and uh, there's a Hindu touch to some okay. of the artwork okay. Okay. and so on and so forth as we see here in the Basilica art and so on. So this is from the mid 16th century around the same time when the Jesuits were just being formed globally. Correct, correct. Right from the foundation of the society. As yeah. we know that Francis Xavier arrived here in 1542 yeah. and the society was approved globally in 1540. Two years later. Two years earlier. Yeah. And then two years later he came. Francis came down. So he was the first Jesuit to come to Goa. And so this uh, canonization anniversary was very dear to us 
that that the tradition still continues even today yeah. to 2023 what are the other articles on yeah the other articles are by another european uh, uh, european writer and her name yeah. is uh, is uh, i'm sorry yeah and her name is monica rage yes, yes, so yes. she has written on altar pieces that is the fronts of the altar how in south goa several churches in south goa have these kinds of altar pieces right and uh, like here for example done by local artists uh, you know and see as we see they are still so very beautiful mm and so rich and such fine work so so she has highlighted all this and is making a plea that all this has to be conserved as it has already monica is known for her work on the conservation uh, yeah conservation yes. and also the altar altars altar of the pieces yes altar, altar pieces. pieces she has been at it for ages now correct and published a lot yeah so she is a professor in lisbon presently so she was very happy to be part of the project i see and who else father delio who's also very well known in goa he was formerly director of our of our center here yeah, yeah. has written on ignatius and xavier as influences uh, they have influenced the art they have inspired the art and the, the, their mm. mentality and spirituality and so on and so forth father rinal uh, uh, my co-editor has written the first article where he speaks of the cultural encounter of the jesuits in goa so it's a totally different perspective very rich articles all of this and uh, we have natasha fernandez who is the the director of the moka museum of christian, christian art. museum of christian art moka so she has written beautifully on the artifacts that they have in the museum I see. and david has taken some very class pictures of that also close ups and so on and so forth so which areas of goa does this cover it covers essentially old goa yeah and rashol these are the two major rashol seminary yeah because rashol seminary was the first jesuit college after st paul's college and so the art and architecture also relates quite a bit to st ignatius though he never came to india yeah. that is the best recording we have it was named after him no the yes it was the called the ignatius college, college. Yeah. yes yeah. correct and then uh, so there is that tradition there and also david is not churches no 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 other churches outside in salset or then there are study. all these churches in salset okay uh, which monica speaks about okay uh, and david has photographed also yes uh, all these churches uh, this is the rashol seminary church i see but uh, these are some of the churches in the south mm. which altar pieces have been taken up these all churches in the south i see uh, in salset 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 all of them are so churches from salset see it's still very rich and very beautiful so when one reads the article of monica for example one gets a very good explanation yeah. and understanding of uh, how these things have survived and there are very excellent references for scholars who want to do further research and reading and everything so the book is a combination of a uh, uh, art project as well as a scholarly project at the same time so those not uh, heavily bent towards scholarship okay. you know need not get worried about uh, uh reading all these details but they can enjoy the photography and the art as well as the articles are very lightly written not heavily what were the challenges for you to bring it together well the ch- challenges Time. was this is an international book so to speak yeah. so we had to keep in touch with the writers who are in macau in portugal during the pandemic uh, yes during the pandemic so it was uh, it was quite a challenge actually work started when yeah two years back two years back two, two years and some few months a lot of trips to yeah. the to the places for yes, the photography particularly trips. yes we had to divide the work my assistant father malcolm did lots of the trips to the south I together see. with photographer david yeah 
and photographer David is very well provided with his equipment and yeah. everything, so he's always ready to go to the site. You know, he's yeah. very thorough and very, 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 thorough. very much of a perfectionist, I would say. Correct, correct. And he, also, he has a keen eye for art. I see. I cannot deny. In spite of his, or because of his science background. Yes, perhaps because of that, he's meticulous. <laughs> he is very particular, very thoroughgoing. He's come out with these uh, print-on-demand limited edition books on Moira and the wildlife that's of Moira. Right, and that's right. That's right. So he is doing quite a lot of stuff uh, yeah. because he is also an environmentalist. The way he lives and the way he's built his house in Moira and so on. So he is very sensitive to preserving not only art but also human. Uh, Life but then the challenge of coming out with a book like this is basically the technology and the economics and the printing, right? Right, right. So, so it's a costly affair in short. It, it is costly. And so we were really worried about this in the beginning, you know, whether this would be a good idea. However, we got very strong backing from our provincial superior I see. And who said, please go ahead. with This will be a gift of the Society of Jesus of Goa branch to the whole society okay and we have Jesuit alumni spread across the world and also if we can somehow reach out to them and get these books at least to some parts of the world launch is going to be on we are planning the launch on October 21 2023 uh, 2023 this year and we hope that one of the assistants of Father General from Rome will be present in Goa for I a see. meeting at that time that he will be the one to to launch the book and so on and so forth. Yeah. Fascinating. Uh, this takes takes ahead uh, the XHR publishing program in a certain sense. Yes, uh, and also the publishing and also the scholarship part because yeah. in the past we have published some art uh, pictures yeah. and so on, but uh, the scholarship did not accompany it. Okay. This time we have really good scholarship that goes with this book. Uh, similar uh, also attempts uh, we have made in other areas you know so this is what we would like to push some more a word about the printers Pragati yes Pragati printers as perhaps those people who are familiar with art books uh, would immediately recognize it's perhaps one of the best in India and they were very cooperative it was a blessing for us because they also knew David the photographer from previous assignments. Yeah, he's done work there. So he's done work there and the book got printed only, was allowed to be printed only after David went to the press I and see. spent a week there. A week them. there? Yes, with them and uh, first checked all the plates and I all see. that, checked all the the lighting and how it is coming. Wow. You Contrast know. and whatever. So all these, the colors he wanted them to be particularly yeah. And those fellows, I believe, said to him, we are so thankful to you that you come like this. I see. Because we will print, of course, to the best of yeah, our ability. Yeah. But, but they don't, don't know. They don't, yeah, they you might. know, what is the, why, what should be light, what should be, we try to do the best that we can, that it looks good, yeah. according to the pictures you all send us. But they said, having you with us, he was telling me, was a good experience for him, because as the plates roll, as the pictures roll off the press he could check immediately he said this needs correction wow. that needs correction then they would adjust thing for another run so as we see everything is like near perfection yeah you know? yeah, yeah yeah so it's uh, really really very beautiful very beautiful thanks thanks for that tony all the best oh, all the best with the launch thanks thanks very much frederick because we hope uh, more and more people will enjoy the book and they will enjoy these treasures of goa True. You know, treasure, treasures. Yeah.